Today, we're going to be looking at Gemini Pro, which is Google's latest update that they're saying is more powerful than ChatGPT when it comes to AI models. And the interesting thing about this is you can use it completely for free inside Bard. So today, what I'll be showing you is how ChatGPT compares directly versus Gemini Pro. We'll be running it through some tests and seeing which one is the best for SEO in terms of keyword research, content creation, context, updates, token limits, and responses. And bear in mind, this is all available for free inside Bard. So I'm going to show you exactly how it works, what the differences are, what it means for you as an SEO, how it impacts search generative experience, everything you need to know about Gemini Pro in terms of SEO. Let's get into it. So we're going to look at Gemini, which is Google's brand new update for AI, and they're claiming it as their largest and most capable AI model. So we're going to test it out today in terms of SEO, how well it performs, how it compares to ChatGPT, etc. And this was announced literally less than 24 hours ago, as you can see. Now there's basically three different models, as you can see for Gemini, right? So this is going to be integrated into Bard. There's going to be an API available as well. And basically there are three different types. So you've got Gemini Nano, which will actually be run on mobile devices. So for example, like the Google Pixel, then you've got Gemini Pro, which is essentially their main model they've just released today. And that's available on Google Bard already. We'll be testing it out today and seeing how it performs. And you've also got Gemini Ultra, which is their largest, most capable model. This is more for complex tasks. I would say it's more like ChatGPT4, and we'll see how it compares versus ChatGPT4 in a second. So basically what they've done here is compared Gemini Ultra, which again, not available yet, is coming soon, apparently next year. And right now the main AI model that is available on bard.google.com is Gemini Pro. But according to ChatGPT4, as you can see, Gemini Ultra outperforms GPT-4 for a lot of different stuff. So for example, reading comprehension, challenging tasks, solving maths problems, etc. And it's also going to be able to handle images, audio, video, etc. And what's interesting as well is you'll see that Gemini is going to the Pixel Pro. So this is the first smartphone engineered to run AI basically. So it's going to be running Gemini Nano, which is their smallest model. You'll be able to do smart replies inside WhatsApp, which is really interesting and summarize recordings as well. And additionally, Gemini is coming to Google Chrome. So there's loads of really interesting stuff there. It's even going to be integrated with search generative experience. Now for SEOs, this is really interesting because of course this impacts how you use everyday sort of technology like your phone. But one of the biggest things is search generative experience it will be integrated with Gemini. So a lot of people have said that Google are not going to roll out search generative experience everywhere because it's so expensive and also too slow. But with the advancements in Gemini, Google said there's going to be faster because Gemini allows a 40% reduction in latency, which means basically the quality of search generative experience and the power of it is going to improve. Now, if you're not sure what search generative experience is, this is Google's new AI update. Let me show you an example. So if you type in, for example, best food for birds, what you're going to see with search generative experience, and this is still in beta right now, is a generative AI that creates a response right here. And this is important to know as an SEO because potentially AI might reduce a lot of the clicks that were coming from Google previously. So previously someone would have to click into a review, check out all the blogs, etc. Whereas now they get a full summary of everything they need to know inside Google, right? So if you're not careful of your keyword strategy, and I might do a video on that in the future, but if you're not careful of your keyword strategy, then you target the keywords, you're not actually getting any clicks from Google and that can impact your rankings and reduce your traffic. So you need to be really careful with that. And you can see here that Really, search generative experience is just about the top three results, right? So what does that have to do with the price of apples? Well, basically, if it's becoming faster and cheaper and better for Google to use search generative experience simply because Gemini is being released and it's always improving, then I would expect to see this update even sooner than we expect. And it's going to hit a lot of SEOs, undeniably. And you will also see on December the 13th, developers will be able to use Gemini Pro via the API in Google AI Studio. Now, this is really important to understand because there's a lot of automations you could actually use with Gemini API, similar to OpenAI and Playground, where you could put this into Google Sheets, create your own apps, etc. But unlike ChatGPT4, where you have to pay to use the API, this is completely free to use, right? Which means that there's a lot of potential to create free SEO tools using Gemini, and that could be really interesting too. But it's coming out December the 13th. So let's get into testing how this performs and how good Google Bard actually is right now. 
So if we go on to Bard, um, this is where you can access Gemini Pro. We're going to just double check that it actually has Gemini Pro inside it. So what we're going to say is Bard on Gemini Pro right now. And you can actually see there's an update at the top that confirms this has Gemini Pro, as you can see. But yes, Bard is on Gemini Pro right now, and that was announced just yesterday. And we're going to be testing out in terms of the content it creates, etc. But what I've asked Bard to do right here is, in the context of SEO, how does Bard, Gemini Pro, compared to ChatGPT4 and ChatGPT3.5, put it in a table and simplify it so it's easy to understand? And we've got a table right here with the feature, the AI model, so you've got Bard, Gemini Pro versus ChatGPT4 and ChatGPT3.5. It might be slightly biased because, of course, we ask in Bard to confirm it, but let's see how it compares. So, for example, advanced keyword research tools, search volume data, etc., which is something you won't get in ChatGPT4 3.5. Content seems to be about the same, as you can see. I like the way it says advanced. For everything under Bard, it says everything. Each feature is advanced compared to ChatGPT. Basically, we've got Bard being Charlie Big Potatoes here and saying it's advanced to everything. And Bard is completely free to use as well. So what we're going to do is compare ChatGPT 3.5, which I think is fair because this is Gemini Pro, not Gemini Ultra. And we'll compare it to ChatGPT 3.5, right? So for example, I've given it this intro prompt that I usually use for creating SEO articles, as you can see. And we're going to compare the output from Bard versus ChatGPT. Now, one thing I do like straight off the bat when it comes to Bard is that you get three different drafts when it comes to the response, right? So I've asked it to create an intro about an article on Parasite SEO, as you can see. And if you click view other drafts over here, it gives you three different options. So if you don't like this one, you can try this one, which I actually quite like. I think that's a nice feature. And it saves you asking ChatGPT or Bard for another response. You can just get three different options in one. View the drafts. If you don't like them, you can click refresh over here and get the response straight away. So this is definitely an upgrade. When I first started using Bard, it wasn't as good as this. It wasn't as intelligent and it was a little bit more clunky to use. So it's definitely improved in that way. But what I can see straight off the bat, for example, in this sentence from Bard, this is Bard's response that I pasted down here. It says, want to skyrocket your search rankings without building your own website? Then you need to learn how to parasite SEO. To me, that doesn't quite make sense. If a writer sent that to me, I'd be like, we're not having that, mate. You got to rewrite it. And basically it's interesting, but it still requires some editing. So I don't think the content is that good. Whereas if I read this intro right here, it's giving me a title from ChatGPT and it's a lot more engaging, right? This is 3.5. You can see how the content writing style is a lot more engaging. So it said, I've discovered the secrets of successful Parasite SEO. I want to share them with you. In this guide, I'll reveal the strategies that can supercharge your rankings and boost your website's traffic. For me, I would say that when it comes to intros, that is a much better article intro, especially if we get rid of that sentence versus this one right here, which grammatically doesn't quite sound right. So in the context of intro writing, ChatGPT wins. Let's check what the token limit is in terms of ChatGPT versus Bard, because obviously if you're creating content using the SEO, then you really want your content to be long, in-depth, comprehensive, and cover every single heading that you need it to. Right. So, for example, you can see that ChatGPT can handle responses up to 4,096 tokens in length. Right. Whereas if you look at Bard, its token limit varies. However, for most prompts, it's around 2,048 tokens, according to the AI models and the answers they give me. So in the context of SEO, I'm not saying for everything, but in the context of SEO, for intro writing, ChatGPT 3.5 wins. For token limits, ChatGPT 3.5 still wins. But let's try some other stuff. So what we're going to do right now is ask it for some keyword research. So I'm going to take one of the prompts from my 50 prompts message right here. If you want access to that, I'm going to include it in the SOP directly in the show notes, as you can see. And I'm going to say, give me some keywords related to bird watching, competitions, search volumes, etc. And we'll do the same on ChatGPT as well. Now, I think this is where Bard is actually going to shine. So what I've actually done here is say, give me keywords related to my niche and their competition slash search volumes. Rate the competition score out of five, five being the highest, zero being the lowest. Give me 20 low competition score keywords of two or less and arrange it in a nice little table so that it's easy to understand. But the data must be real and it must be validated because hopefully what this is going to do is feed in the details from its actual keyword tool. So for example, if we take this keyword right here and we're gonna validate it because it might be BSing me, it might be having me on pulling my leg and I don't think this is going to be 100% accurate when I've checked it against keyword, Google Keyword Planner. 
but basically you can see that it does give you a decent breakdown of the keyword, the competition score, the search volume, estimated CPC. I would take that with a pinch of salt, honestly. But yeah, you get a bunch of easy keywords that you probably rank for. And if you look at the data source underneath, it says this data is based on a combination of Google Keyword Planner, Keyword Surfer, and Ahrefs data. I'm not 100% convinced, but I would say look at the trends, not the data itself. However, if you compare that to ChatGPT 3.5, it literally doesn't give you anything. Right, so it doesn't even attempt to give you the answer. And in fact, it refers you back to Google Keyword Planner. So I would say one of the main use cases of Gemini Pro is that you can actually use it for keyword research. And it's kind of like a free keyword research tool that you can use to create anything you want. In fact, the prompt that I've just used right there, I will include in the show notes so you can see the 50 prompts right here that you can take a look at. But basically for keyword research, Bard wins. That's a win for Bard. Good on you. Now, one thing to note here is that Bard doesn't seem to be connected to the internet. So for example, if you say, what are the news headlines today? It will say as of October the 26th, quite a while ago now, here are some of the top news headlines. Whereas let's ask ChatGPT 3.5 when it was last updated. So it's got data up to January, 2023. So Bard wins the update round, but neither are really great, honestly. And I don't think you can compare Bard to ChatGPT 4 simply because this isn't the Gemini Ultra system. Right, so this is Gemini Pro, this is a free version, and we're comparing it against ChatGPT 3.5's free version. Now what I'm going to do is actually create a new article with ChatGPT 3.5 and compare it versus Bard. So we're going to say create a comprehensive article about the keyword, the birds like cats, and we're going to give that to ChatGPT and Bard as well, with exactly the same prompt, and see which one creates a better output, all right? So straight off the bat, what I don't like is ChatGPT has actually had an error generating the response. It's given me code in HTML for some reason, so it's a bit silly. We're going to regenerate and give it another shot. But again, it's just creating the content in HTML, which we don't like. Whereas if you look at the response from Bard, it's broken down the content nicely. It's actually given me a proper response. I can use that. I can't use this. And in terms of time and productivity for content creation, I would say Bard wins. Additionally, what you can see is that Bard uses the keyword inside the first line of the introduction, plus the title of the content. It split up the text nicely. It's giving me some nice FAQs, etc. And the output, let's see how long that is. So the output is 565 words. Let's check ChatGPT. Pretty poor response from ChatGPT there. And it's 391 words. So Bard creates longer outputs, better formatted content, doesn't break, optimizes the content properly using the keywords and does exactly what I ask it to. And additionally, you can get other drafts, right? So you can say, right, I want to use this draft or this draft, etc. So for me, if I compare Bard versus ChatGPT 3.5, it's a no brainer. Bard is winning. So overall, is Gemini Pro better versus ChatGPT? Well, I would say for intro writing, no. For token limits, no. ChatGPT is normally going to be able to handle more context. But for SEO keyword research, Bard wins. For updates on the latest data, neither of them are perfect, but Bard is still winning. And then finally, for SEO content creation, which is probably the main thing, Bard is winning by a long way. Now, what's also interesting with Gemini is that it can do loads of other stuff that interacts with the real world. So for example, it can turn images into code. It can find similarities between images. It's a lot more interactive than ChatGPT might be right now. And I think this is going to create a lot of pressure on OpenAI to release ChatGPT 5 next year because all of a sudden they've got serious competition here. And it's amazing what the potential of Gemini Ultra is right now. I will say there's not a massive amount of excitement when it comes to the stock price of Google. And that's usually a good indicator of how interesting an API update is. So for example, if you look at the shares of Google, they've not increased massively month on month, for example, since this update. But a lot of people are hyping it up to be the best thing since sliced bread, basically. And if you're wondering where Gemini Pro is available, so which countries Bard has Gemini Pro supported? Well, you can see a list of all the countries right here. Interesting to note here, because of regulations, the United Kingdom does not have it available yet. So the UK doesn't have Gemini Pro. But if you're in Albania, happy days. You live in the dream. You got all the AI you could ever need. And of Additionally, Europe as well doesn't seem to have it just yet. I will say I've seen some posts on Reddit where they actually say a VPN can help you get access to it. So I'm sure there are ways you can figure it out yourself. 
some free Chrome extensions or something like that. So what I'm going to do is I will leave a link to all the notes from this video inside the comments in the description. If you want to get access to that for free, plus 50 prompts for ChatGPT, you can. You don't need to opt into a free course or anything like that. And if you do want to book in a call about how to get more leads, traffic, and sales from SEO, feel free to book in a free SEO strategy session where we can talk about building you a link building campaign that predictably and consistently delivers you more backlinks, traffic, and sales to your website. And basically what I will do is answer any questions that you have. You'll get an SEO domination plan. You'll learn the best link building strategies for your website, and you'll discover how to quickly outrank your competitors using link building. Links in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.